Welcome back to another video, you legends. I am here with my good friend Andrew at Zalazin on Instagram. You guys can go follow him. Now, you have an unbelievable car collection. Absolutely crazy. One of my favorite in the world. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm literally gonna whack you guys on this GoPro right here and just keep it rolling and we're gonna have a chat about the collection, about what's in the collection, what's been in the collection, what might leave, what might come, and everything. We basically just said we're gonna chat about everything and anything to do with cars and to do with you and your passion and collection for them. So let's skip to the GoPro now. Andrew, welcome to the channel. Thank you, sir. You, you've been here many times today. <laughs> <laughs> a few times. But I have to say that having the opportunity to spend time with people that are passionate about cars, about anything, it's been my life. You know, you try to spend time with folks who really care, really have an attitude and a very positive influence on everything around them, and that's you. You know, we've known each Thank other for, for quite some time, actually, probably a quarter of your life now, which isn't very yeah. long yeah. my age. But um, every single time we get together, it's memorable. We do something provocative, something different. Think about something unusual, and, and well, the results are always exceptional. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. I mean, you guys don't know this is behind the scenes, but Andrew's mentored me a lot, business-wise and life-wise and everything. And so, despite living very far away from each other, we stay in touch. And as you say, we've been on many adventures, and um, I'm looking forward to the future ones to come. But. You guys probably know this, if you follow him on Instagram, you have an absolutely mental collection. I mean, it's it's gonna take a while for you to tell us through this, but what are some of the cars that you currently own? I mean, right now we're in a Bentley Continental Super Sports. Right. And we thought we were just talking this car on our drive home. But walk us through some of the other cars you have in the collection. Well, first I need to um, give, make an excuse for the Bentley Super Sports. I, I'm not quite a Bentley person. Yeah. But. Um, Having lived in New York for, for most of my life and being born and raised in Brooklyn, um, I needed a car for the winter. So I looked for yeah. an all-wheel drive car that would really kind of set my expectations a little higher. And I drove a bunch of cars, and this is a couple of years ago, and I decided I would test drive the Bentley Super Sports. Actually, at the time, it was the Bentley Speed. Yeah. I happened to have a Super Sports in stock as a demo, and I drove it, and I was blown away. But I literally said, there's no way I'm going to buy a Bentley. Not a chance. Yeah, like, it's yeah, not yeah. me, it's not my image, all that kind of stuff. And I went back and I retest drove all the other cars, and then I couldn't help it. I had to come back and test drive the Bentley again. And I did, and it was just like Usain Bolt, the, the, the famous you know, gold medalist world record holder sprinter. Yeah, yeah. It's huge, but it moves like nothing else. It's gorgeous, it's fabulous. It's um, a great car, all around. Yeah. It's fun, it's two seats. Which yeah, which is in. nuts. Um, yeah. It's a little lighter. Um, I'm fortunate that Rentec has done a little bit of a tune. So okay, Rentec, yeah. which is famous for Mercedes and other things, actually did a special tune that has brought up the horsepower, which is 620 out of the factory, up a few hundred, right. if you will. At a least few at, hundred? At the crank. Oh, wow. Um, we okay. haven't dialed yeah. it particularly, but it's a, it's a fun car. It gets only about eight miles to the gallon, unfortunately. We've but, already uh, filled it up once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes pretty quickly. But this is kind of like a snowy winter daily. It is. And then you've got, I mean, walk us through, in no particular order, some of the cars you've got, and then we can talk about them individually and uh, go through that. Well, again, to go a little bit back, you know, I didn't come from money. I'm one of four yeah. kids. My my dad was a city worker in New York City. I mean, it's an unbelievable story. I mean, walk us through all of that. But this video can be as long as we like. No, you know, it's it's not that unusual for people that I grew up with. You know, we 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 always had. My mom was the one who had a passion for cars. My dad drove a cab, so he was tired of driving. Although he did the dutiful thing and would drive us wherever we wanted, whenever we wanted. But for me, it was about cars. It was a way of being free to escaping. I was there, my mom and I, we'd mess you know, around on a Sunday or a Saturday, and we'd go and get some McDonald's hamburgers by scraping up pennies in her purse and things like that. It was yeah. it was a place to go to, to get away from the you know the everyday. So um, it makes you have it makes you have value and realize the fortunate position that you're in now as well. Yeah, but because, again. Um, You've worked to be here very, very, very hard over the years, and it's it's incredible, and I respect it hugely, as I'm sure everyone else here does. Oh, and again, with you, you could have done a lot of things. You chose to take risk. You jumped out of the typical uh, band you normally go into, go to college or university, and do all those things, but you chose to follow your passion. 
took a risk. You have a great family. I've, I've been fortunate also to get to know. They support you and they've they've really done some amazing things to allow you to envision your dreams. And um, I'm glad I could be a part of it. So. Well, thank you so much. And we've both been bitten by a little spider which has, a, which has given us this petrol head sort of life within us that we we live by it, don't we? We do, yeah. Once it, a petrol head, always a petrol head. And you have always been one. You've done racing, you've done motorbike racing, um, you've driven pretty much every and any road car. I've, I've, you know, I've, again, been very fortunate that the people that I've gotten to know and the business with or gotten to be friends with have also the same kind of passion. Yeah. And maybe it's because I chose to opt into that world. Um, but those are the people that I enjoy being with. You know, these these hands are a little calloused. Um, I know how to turn a wrench. I've, I've, you know, done the bottom end, the top end of cars. I've done everything from, you know, body work and, yeah. and mechanical work and everything in between. Um, not very good at the interior work. Yeah, you know, it's, this, it's but, a bit um, different that though. It doesn't. It's not as important either. Um, so. And now, and now today, you're in the fortunate position where you drive some incredible cars. So. People know me more of a Porsche fanatic, and I guess I am, but I'm an equal opportunity offender. I've got cars from a 68 Camaro with a supercharged LS2 and a Bresto Mod to yeah. career GTs and 57 Speedsters and old Porsches and Ferraris and everything in between. But again, I'm fortunate, and you know, people ask me, what's my favorite car? And I used to say, I don't have a favorite. But I do, and that's the Carrera GT. That's your favorite. Yeah. That is my favorite. We just had an opportunity to go out and rip around it a little bit. Which was um, unreal. I hope you guys have seen that video. If you haven't, the link's going to be around. <laughs> the most amazing thing about that, we have done something I believe nobody else has ever done in the Carrera GT. We push started it. Push started a Carrera GT. I don't know if anyone's ever done that. It was out of battery. And Andrew just says, hop on by, give it a push, let's see how this goes. And it went quite well. And you actually have three Carrera GTs because you like it that much. Well, you know, the, I've always said to myself that if I could own the cars that I love to drive, I'd like to have them every place that I am. So the Carrera GTs really occupy, occupy a special place for me. They're an incredible car. And um, as we discussed when we were actually driving the car, they give you everything. Every time you get into a Carrera GT, it's an occasion. Oh, yeah. The look, the smell, firing up the engine, holding the key, putting your hand on the clutch, putting your foot on the clutch actually, yeah, um, and your hand on the, the gear shift, it's just it's just an unusual experience. Oh yeah. Every single time. And they're beautiful and you you're fortunate to have it in different specs. You've got the silver, you've got the black. And yeah, I mean you've got some I mean, I might just rattle off some of the cars that I know you have. Right, uh, and this is getting long and meandering. I think that no, no, you'll no. probably do a good job of editing out some of this stuff. No, 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 don't worry. Well, I mean, this video, I want it to be as raw as possible. It's only one angle, and it's only us chatting. So if it gets a bit long-winded, if, if you know, you don't like these sort of lo sort of long videos where we're just chatting, this isn't the video for you. If you want to hear the incredible story of a true Petrohead who's come from a humble background, worked up, and got an incredible car collection, then stay tuned. I mean, I'm gonna rattle a few off. Let me know if I forget any. 911 R, uh, 991 50th anniversary, 57 Speedster, three Carrera GTs, GT2 RS, um, RWB, McLaren F1, uh, 250 short wheelbase, Cayman GT4, Camaro, Bentley, what am I missing out? Lots of others, but um, the one you forgot is the Scuderia. Scuderia. Which is apparently your favorite car of all time right now. Right now, it, it, it pretty much is, yeah. I drove one, his, yours, <laughs> today, which was also in a pretty gnarly spec. It was pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, I'll I've ask got, you. I've got the AMGs. I've got, I'm oh, yes. I'm going to be, it was uh, selected to, uh, to be one of the folks that get the Project One, which I'm looking forward to, although, it's taking a little longer than anybody would have wanted. Um, it was like yeah. instant gratification, but it's a car that's still under development. It's going to be truly exceptional. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, again, the fortunate part, the AMGs, the Black Series, and all of those things. A little different than the Porsches, but oh, yeah. the incredible engineering, the passion. Tobias Spores, who's the CEO, is probably the 
one engineer who is running a car company that is as massive a petrol head as we are. Yeah, um, yeah. They also make the engines for the Paganis and you know F1 Mike is I think you and I've spent a little bit of time with is the guy who hand builds all those engines. So oh, I mean, and an absolute legend. And it, so Black Series wise, you have what the SLS. Yes. C C63 Black Series. Um, I had a CLK car. Black, right. but uh, didn't keep that car very long. Surprisingly. But okay. I think one of my rules is that I love to have cars for every occasion. In the Carrera GT, you have a different frame of mind than you do for a 57 Speedster, and then you do for a Scuderia. A GT2 yeah. RS, the Visoc, the one that you just drove, versus the GT3 RS, yeah. the Visoc. Oh yeah, I forgot about the GT3. Similar cars, that. right? One makes you know 700 horsepower stock, the other one five and a quarter. Yeah. One rips to 9,000 plus RPMs, the other barely seven. 200 plus horsepower difference, if you will, or maybe 200 horsepower difference. But each one satisfies a different desire. You know, you wake up in the morning, you're looking for outright speed and, you know, just absolute horsepower, the GT2 yeah. RS. If you want something that you can, you know, have sideways and all the sounds and the, the noises and the PDK just slashing through all the gears up and down and left and right, that's a GT3 RS. Every car has its own purpose. I mean, I'll, I'll ask you a few questions, one which may be tricky. What are three cars that you have owned that you've let go that you somewhat regret letting go? None. None? None. Every car you've sold, you're like, I had yeah. my moment with it, it's gone, there yeah. we go. Yes. And that's okay. kind of the way I like to look at it. There's no looking in the rear view mirror, it's all about what's ahead. And, and I used to be looking for the next greatest thing. Yeah. But when that happened and recently in the last couple of years, I thought, what, what cars give me great joy, great satisfaction to drive? The Career GT at the top of the list and being able to own more than one, um, that's the thing for me. I mean, for yeah. the same price, you can own so many others. Oh, but, sure. you know, for me, that's find the cars that infuse you with passion and you look forward to driving. We talked a little bit about cars that I've driven that you, know, you go on rallies or you drive three or four or five days, but you want to drive for five or six or eight more days. You always leave those cars wishing you could get up back in and go for a drive. Yeah. Um, those are the things that we look for. I have a 57 Speedster that I probably put 5,000 miles a year on, and I've, I've driven it from San Diego to San Francisco where it was 102, and it was 45 at the end of the drive. It's got no creature comforts, but, but it's beautiful. You love it. I love it.
Yeah. That's all that really matters. Oh, for sure. And are there, are there any other upcoming cars? I know one more. You know, there there are a few. There's the um, the Porsche Speedster that will be coming down say. the road, which will will shock everybody when they find out what color. I, be, yeah, that's gonna um, surprise you. I fooled around with a lot of people on the GT3 RS when I got to Leipzig. I thought you were gonna yeah. say that. I was like, what direction is this going in? <laughs> so I was kidding about that when I showed up. I showed a blue one, a yeah. Miami blue one on my uh, my Instagram, which was pretty funny. Yeah, and basically blew everybody away. But yeah. um, it'll be a little different. It's gonna be a little special. That car is going to again a car that's gonna speak to me. I hope. Sure. It may not speak to everybody else, but I don't do it. Speak to me. you. That's the most important. Yeah, and you asked, you asked me a question, an um, interesting question not too long ago. You said to me, you know, with the Line 11 R, yeah. you know, did you think that the wheels would work and were you concerned or worried about that? And I said, you know, I, I did that car for me. Yeah. I didn't do it for anybody else. And if people think or thought it was crazy or it looked ugly or whatever it is, everybody's going to have their own opinion. But it spoke to me, the, the 73 RS that you had the opportunity to drive for a couple of years and had the red fuchs wheels and all that kind of stuff, that to me is something that spoke to me. I yeah. wanted to be in there. There was a history behind it, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And as a collector, this is something I've always wondered, how do you get around the logistics of owning so many cars? You don't. You don't. You don't. Look at today, Monique asked me, um, <laughs> where's the C63 black? And I was like, I think it's here. Yeah, but yeah, it might yeah. be at the other storage facility. So you genuinely sometimes you don't know where. Sometimes you lose track of where they are. Um, fortunately, a lot of the people that I know, they either keep them at their garages or in their houses, or they drive them. We were today at Apple. Yeah. With Shy, who has the Scuderia, and it was a car he that he had up on his, his garage. And and when I heard that, and when I saw that, I wanted. I thought the best person to, to watch over that car when I'm not driving it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you... I was driving around in the 73 RS for a while. Extremely rare car. Extremely valuable car. Which he literally left at my house and said, can I leave it here for a while? And I was like, no problem. So the only condition said was that you drive it once in a while. And I was like, you know what? Okay. It was like, it was honestly like a dream. And I was like, is this actually happening? But thinking about it from my perspective, you know, the fact that I can do that. When I was a kid, my neighbor had a Corvette. And he let me sit in it, he drove me in it, it was all that great stuff, of sharing that passion. That's what it's all about. It is. It gave me an aspiration, it gave me something to shoot for. It, it, it spoke to me in so many different ways. And if I can do that, you know, in a big or small way, people sitting in the cars, people going for drives, giving people the keys, throwing them the keys, people putting thousands of miles on them, they're meant to be driven. They, yeah, they really are. And I mean, it is nuts. We've driven, I don't even know, full? I, I drove four of your cars today. So. See, we lost the track. Like, four or five <laughs> cars today. And literally, you were just hop and show me how it all works and then hand over the key and be like, listen, have a blast. Um, so so, I mean, but I also trust you. I've driven with you, and there are certain people when you drive with them, you either trust them or you don't. And, and as a race car driver, filling it in my bones and in my rear end, that's important. And I trust you, and I, and I trust your judgment too, by the way. Um, in, in, in every circumstance. So for me, it gives me the confidence. And that's what I do. Um, well, fantastic. Listen, if ever you need a caregiver for a car, you know that, uh, you know I'm around. <laughs> well, I'm trying to convince you not to buy a Scuderia just yet, but then you make it trip yeah. to San Francisco a week, a year, and, and use that as your own. Oh, that, that would be, nothing would give us greater pleasure. Well, thank you so much. I mean, you hear that, guys. We need to come back to San Francisco. And We've spoken about the logistics, we've spoken about some of the cars. I want to walk through the story of a few of the cars. We spoke about this. I mean, one that people are probably wondering about a lot is the F1, the McLaren F1. That is an absolutely unbelievable car. And again, as with the Project One, what made you decide I need an F1 in the collection? You know, I throw, I'll throw a bunch of concepts out, and it wasn't. Um, surprising to me that that car would be as valuable as it is today. I was fortunate to get to know the, uh, the person, the MD, the managing director at McLaren. Yeah. And looking through and being, I think, the first outside person to actually see the P1. Yeah. And, and we talked about that. We talked about the new car company, what they're doing and why. And the mystery there, the first, you know, carbon fiber monocoque, the first fill in the blank, and the 
blast the horn and really just make a real impression. Fastest car ever built. Yeah. 15 plus years. One Le Mans street yeah. car that yeah. was that, that was capable of winning Le Mans. It's, it's not. It's insane. insane. It's absolutely insane. And so, so you just decided that needs to be in the connection. No. Or? And and you know and again and this these being able to acquire these things were looking at the icons when I was a kid. You know, growing up, I was, um, I tell people the story when I was a teenager. Um, I was doing construction in Brooklyn, and we had an opportunity to sit around at lunchtime, and there was an article in the newspaper, the Daily News, a black and white photo of a Lamborghini Miura. And it was the most magnificent car, and it had been stolen. And the title said, you know, exotic car stolen. And I looked at the guy next to me, and I said, someday I'm going to own a car like that. Yeah. And he looked at me, and he said, you'll never be able to afford it. Yeah. And from that, I took the challenge. And I was like, fine, you want to be like that? I'm going to make sure that someday I'm able to afford all of my wants yeah. and my desires, not just my needs. Yeah. And, and that's what I set out on. And, and cars were an expression, I think, of a lot of the things that I wanted. It was a passion. It was freedom. My mom was a big car person. The best things I remember happened in and around cars. It was part of the lifetime experience. My, my, my parents used to drive four kids in the station wagon from Brooklyn to Berkeley. I remember you saying, yeah. Yeah, with the family dog, and um, it was an experience, but it was, you know, family, it was togetherness. It was pretty awesome. And it happens in the cars, doesn't it? And now, you do it in some pretty, pretty epic cars. I mean, that's the F1. Another one which I don't know too much about, is the 250 short wheelbase, so which is a beautiful car. It is. Yes. You know, and when I, when I was looking at it, it wasn't really a car that most people knew. It was a very esoteric Ferrari. Yeah. It looked like a Lusso. In fact, in many ways it is. It was. Yeah. But it was a little different. And I liked the way it looked. It was like a crouching leopard. Yeah. The haunches in the back and the way that it stood and all the things about it were pretty exceptional. You know, but when I was looking at them, they were not well known or very much appreciated by most people. The thing they weren't as valuable as they are now. No, not at all. Because more people are now aware of it. There are a lot of dynamics that go on in the car collection place in the yeah. industry. But in that car in particular, it was a very esoteric car. They didn't make a lot of them. Um, it had a very good race history overall. But most people didn't really know what it was. And, you know, people couldn't tell the difference between that and a loose. So they didn't understand the differences. They didn't yeah. appreciate, yeah. you know, what was going on with this stuff. Um, you know, again, that's a car that spoke to me. It didn't speak to others, um, but it did to me. And fortunately, I guess um, it became a more valuable car as I owned it. Yep, I mean, that's always a good thing, yeah. No, but again, again, the thing which is crazy with you, which I really want to get across, is that you don't really care about that. You never fit in the cars. If you sell a car, it's not to fit it. I mean, you had a LaFerrari, sold that just because you didn't want that, right? Anymore. Well, that's the thing. You know, the, the funny, funny concepts are... Oh, sorry, we almost went through a red light. Almost. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> Well, the, the thing for me is that I never look at a car as an investment. Um, yeah. While I've made cars or I've had cars that become more valuable, incredibly valuable, yeah. um, I do it because I have a passion for them. Yeah. And they are depreciating assets, most of all, but they're not if you're enjoying them and using them and that utility value to them. So I think what's, what's happening today is a little scary because people are buying things with the expectation that they're going to go up in price. You saw what happened with the 675. People yes. bought limited edition. A lot of people, speculators, bought them, and then they came out with the 675 Spider. And then the prices of those cars have dropped significantly. Massively, yeah. I mean, like, how do you, how can you speculate like that? Yeah. Um, I'm safe because I love the cars that I buy. And because of that, I'll always have value. And it doesn't matter whether they go up or down in price. Yeah. Um, and if I don't enjoy them any longer, and the LaFerrari is a fabulous car. You know, I had 918 as well, and, um, and, and when you drove them back to back, I love for it, of course, it sounded great, but it wasn't well engineered. And I know that's really a bad thing to say in a lot of car circles, but it just didn't deliver on its looks and on its sound. Yeah. Um, a fabulous car on a individual basis, but when compared to others, it, it didn't stir my soul. And it was a bit of a pain in the rear end. So um, I've never, never driven one. 
I have driven the 918 and a P1, but never the, the laugh that's the missing, missing piece. We'll make, we'll we'll make, make that, that happen. happen. Yeah. That, that, that should be too difficult to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> sounds, sounds like a plan. plan. Okay. And what the, the overriding brand, I, think, I believe, in, in the car that you have is Porsche. It is. Is that for any particular reason, or is it just they made the most cars that you connected with? You know, the, the 911, um, the rear engine, the dynamics, the, the fact that it's iconic and all that kind of stuff, the engineering is just exceptional. Yeah. And every 911, even the 356s I get into, or 550s, every one I get into, it feels the same. It feels familiar. The dynamics are incredible. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, that's, it's, it's the intangibles. It's the limbic side of your brain, the side that doesn't, you know, can't, isn't verbal. Yeah. But when I get in, I enjoy it. It feels like it's part of me. And whether it's an old 911 or the new ones, they just feel right, like an old sneaker that I put on. Yeah. They just feel great. Yeah. Um, they are, contrary to popular belief, incredibly reliable. They're somewhat fuel efficient. Um, they're just amazing. All around the cars. cars. They are. And, and you, you can, can get, get one with four wheel drive and no top, top with a half top, you know, two wheel drive, you can get one with a PDK or six shift, you can get one with a GT3, you can get a GT3 with a wing, you can get one with a six shift or a PDK or GT3 RS or GT2 RS. It's correct. Yeah. I mean, we drove the 911 on did a comparison with the GT2 RS. And I mean, two cars, same platform, couldn't be more different. It's incredible. But here's the thing, push each one to the limit, and they feel familiar. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and your instincts, you can trust them, and you, you just, it feels right. Yeah, it just feels right. Absolutely. And, I mean, for all the young car lovers out there, um, like me, like a lot of people watching, that wish and dream to one day be able to own or drive or see even one of these cars but feel like it's such an unobtainable dream what would you say to them? You know I've asked that a fair number of times and given my background and things what I say is that have a passion for what you do yeah. and focus on what you do and what you do best don't focus on your goals what you dream of will happen if you trust yourself and your instincts and you surround yourself with good people work more incredibly hard luck is always there right but don't rely on that rely on your own abilities and your own vision and your own passion that's um, true and, and, and surround yourself with people who are of equal minds in that regard it's true you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with and you always need to try and make sure you're the hardest person hardest working person in whichever room you go into yeah. you never leave you just have regrets I mean I don't have regrets don't leave anything on the table whether yeah. it's a physical kind of thing or it's you know, relationships or it's business, you know, you push, you don't, you don't lose sight of the fact that there's a point where you should cut your losses and don't put good energy after bad energy. That's the case in business, it's the case personal, in case in, even in racing. If you blow a turn, you can't make up for it. You yeah. gotta look ahead. That's why your windscreen is so big and your rear mirror is so small, right? It's <laughs> very true of what you're trying to get down the road. And um, there, are, there are a tremendous number of analogies I mean, you know, in course, but you can attain your dreams. If you dream big enough, don't have small dreams, have really, really big dreams. And again, surround yourself with really good people uh, that you respect and respect you, and you'll push each other. And you'll see where things can go, and there really is no, no limit. I mean, it's, you know, Eric Senna, the greatest race driver of my estimation, you know, he says, yeah. you know, there are no limits. You continue to push yourself, and you push yourself so hard, and you push through these barriers you thought they were there. And they are. And it's not so hard on the other side, right? It's yeah. Kind of just pushing yourself. Like what you did by saying, I'm not going to university, I'm not doing what my family wants, I'm not what doing everybody wants. I'm doing something that is somewhat provocative. I'm going to push myself and make myself uncomfortable. Yeah. And being uncomfortable is great. And being comfortable being uncomfortable is even better. Yes, that makes, it does make a lot of sense. And I know what you mean. And it's kind of like when you drive a car, right? We were, we were talking, talking about this, how we both have this trait when we hop into a car, we kind of instantly want to see where the wheel spin is, where the understeer is, 
um, how hard you can break. You want to find the limit of the car as soon as you hop in, because then you feel like you get to know. And it's the same in life, it's the same in business. Hop in, find the limit, test it out, and then you can judge from there and move forward. Well, yeah, I, I embrace that, that philosophy. It's You need to go past your limits. A lot of people think they're at nine tenths when they're really at five. And until you get past, you break through those, and you're in, uncomfortable, you never know how to react on the other side. Because life will throw you curves. You know, things will be 11 tenths. And you can't control everything. But having the confidence, the experience, and being able to push through things, that's really what it's all about. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and everyone underestimates what they're capable of doing. Whether it's, I've always said this, whether it's sports-wise, whether it's uh, in business, in life, in all these different things, everyone always underestimates what you can do. Well, you know what? You should never as underestimate what you can do again. I think that's it. That's for others to do. And, you know, others are tentative and they limit themselves, but never limit yourself. And don't listen to other people when they think you have limits. Oh, absolutely. Or your potential or any of that stuff. Just do it. Seriously, I mean, that's a stupid Nike right thing to just do it, but it's... But it's true. I mean, what, what's going to happen? You'll have some titanium in your shoulder and some pins in your thing. You'll have some scars. You'll have some things, but... Just do it. We just ran out of battery on this, so I don't know if the sound changed. But, I mean, what you have to say with that is you can always put yourself further. I'm sure you've had experiences where you you set off to do something and you think to yourself, there's no way I'm going to manage to do that. I mean, stupid example... We filmed 14 videos today, right? If someone had told me that we could film two videos on an average day, I would have said, no way. No way. A video usually takes much longer than that. But if you just go out there, you do it, no problem. Oh, but here's Sports. the funny part. No, you said something to me today. You said, you said we are good. We're going to do 14 videos today. And you kind of laughed at that. And you said, no, is that is that even possible? And the answer is, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's possible. And, and don't kid yourself, and don't limit yourself either. Yeah. It's everything is possible. For Seriously. Sure. What, what's sure. what's not? Well, it's like the first people who tried to run a triathlon, right? Everyone would have said, no way. But you push yourself and you'll always find out that you're doing better. Well, these are, we're, we're going into our garage. We live on Lombard Street. Yeah. Um, which is the crookedest street in the world, they say. One of the coolest. Well. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. And we've got a lot of tourists that come up here. It's a great place, great source of energy. It and is nuts how many there are. Yeah. And we, you know, crawl in to try to kill people. At least they think we are. Yeah, right? But anyways, I mean, massive thank you to you, Andrew, for this video. Massive thank you for, you know, everything you've taught me and I hope will keep teaching me over the years. And, you know, I think people have hopefully learned some valuable lessons but also just had a bit of an insight into your life your story and your car collection and i hope they've enjoyed that please let me know down below what you thought please follow andrew on instagram because there's some great content there and he is just a a fantastic person a fantastic businessman and a fantastic petrol head so thank you so much and guys if you enjoyed this you want to see more videos let me know in the comments like this video and subscribe thank you brother Okay. Cheers, guys. Bye.